I have been waiting more than two years to show you what's inside this box. And I am not exaggerating because this is a video I am very excited for. I won't waste your time. I spent the last few years making the perfect set of keycaps and it wasn't as easy as I thought. Now first, I wanted to turn a concept into a product that you guys could actually buy. And I've actually made keycaps in the past, but I had to learn from some of my experiences. But first, do you guys want to see something crazy? What if I told you that this keyboard could make me coffee? What? Let me show you real fast. And with just one message, Again? Seriously? God, you must be addicted. We've got a coffee. Thanks, Alfred. Oh, yeah. Now, this story starts a few years ago when I made my very first set of keycaps in finicky delight. But there was just one problem. Wait, sorry, did I say one problem? I actually meant a hundred. First, the keycaps were too expensive. The design process took a while. It took almost a year to ship. And worst of all, it was with InfiniKey. I don't want to talk about it. Then I found Kinetic Labs and I made Polycaps Hippo, the one with the butts. Now that keycap set has done incredibly well. In fact, it's even sold out six times. But during the whole process, I felt like maybe something was missing. Coffee, I needed to make a coffee set. So for the last few years, I've been working and prototyping and designing and prototyping and prototyping, but I think I've finally made the perfect coffee keycap set. So grab a cup of coffee, hit subscribe, let's go. We're going. Now you're probably wondering where are we going and how are we getting there? Well, I got the box, finally. The final production unit of my keycap set. Well. It's somewhere in here, I guess. Now I wanted this video to be a little bit more relaxed compared to some of my other videos, so I have a rough plan. I'm gonna build a keyboard, it's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'm gonna try out a bunch of different switches. So you're gonna wanna stick around for that. And all of this is gonna be themed around my coffee shop keycaps as I tell you about some of the mistakes that I made and what you can learn from them. Now, all of this stuff was sent out to me by Kinetic Labs, which is who I worked with to make this keycap set, and they sent me a lot of different switches, my god. Most importantly, however, they also sent me a keyboard which they said will be coffee themed because we're gonna have to build the coffee theme board, remember? But what is Alfred up to? Yeah, so ever since I stopped paying rent, Hippio has made me his personal coffee minion. Between the mold in my walls and Alfred not paying rent anymore, I kind of had to come up with a solution in order to get my coffee every day. Anytime he asks, oh, Alfred, make me a coffee. Alfred, I don't care about your feelings. I'm not gonna make my own coffee, right? What else is he gonna do? Pay rent? I really need my coffee. So while Alfred is stuck making me coffee for the rest of the year, let's take a look at this keyboard here. Personally, my favorite aspect of keyboards is making a build with a theme. And when Kinetic Labs told me they had a brown keyboard, I mean, of course I had to try it. Now we're gonna be looking at the TG67 V3. I've previously tried their V1 keyboard and that was pretty lackluster. However, this version, they've got a lot of improvements. Like it comes with lube, and a cable, and they've also done some internal improvements so that this thing will probably end up sounding absolutely incredible. I mean, we'll find out. Now I know you probably just want to hear about the coffee keycaps, but I think this keyboard is very interesting as well, because when building it, you'll actually learn quite a bit, from lubing stabilizers with the included lube, to picking out your own switches and keycaps, which will require you to engage with the keyboard community just a little bit, which a lot of people forget that that's a thing. Now at $252, it is a pretty expensive mid-range keyboard, but we'll be putting that to the test to see if it's worth it as well. It's got a full aluminum construction with these little divots cut out from the side so you can move it around your desk really easily. Ignore the lube I got on the keyboard, please. And it also comes in a bunch of different colors, except there's just kind of one initial problem that I've noticed. It still has a bit of ping. Let's get it open real fast. 
This thing gets a 10 out of 10 for disassembly because it's just a bunch of super easy to do screws and bada bing bada boom, it pops right open. This reveals the interesting fact that it's a gasket mounted keyboard, but also that it probably needs the force break mod, which we'll talk about in just a second, as this top piece of the case is just a little bit pingy from metal on metal contact. Taking this board open reveals that it comes with quite a few foams, albeit no PE foam and some very squishy gaskets, which is kind of nice. To prepare the board for the keycaps and switches, all we gotta do is blop this tape on, and by blop it on, I mean cut a little strip out from the tape and place it delicately over the parts where metal on metal contact is made. Make sure you poke a hole out for the screws. This is a super easy mod to do, and it's really, really great for any keyboard that has a little bit of ping. I'm looking at you, Keychrons. Now, I would be mad at this keyboard for needing it, but there's $600 keyboards that need it, so that's just the reality of keyboards at this point. With a keyboard ready to build, you're probably wondering, what switches are you gonna go with? Well, I mean, the board is brown, right? So obviously we have to go with Cherry MX Browns, right? Cherry MX Browns. They're thawky, they're incredible, they're lovely and tactile. You know, anytime I think of a switch that's good, I always think of Cherry MX Browns. So that's what I'm gonna be putting in this keyboard. So let me just put one in real quick. Sorry, I've uh, just been informed that if I talk about Cherry MX Browns again, Glarses will delete my YouTube channel. So on a serious note, I got sent a bunch of different switches with this keyboard, which I was really happy to experiment with. I tried every single one of them and honestly, they were all pretty good but none of them were coffee colored, so I had to go with a different option. Forever back, I got these iced latte switches from Dan Keebs and Captain Sterling. I didn't really think much of them. I was like, oh, it's a linear switch. Ah, oh, they look kind of brown like a latte, that's fun. And then boom, it hit me. So then I've just been saving these switches for, a, I don't know, like six months until I was finally ready to do this keyboard build. Yeah, I've been playing this for a while. Now, at 65 cents a switch, these are on the mid-range side for switches. But, oh, what's this? Is this a new contender entering the arena? Oh my god. Well, shortly after I got those ice latte switches, Yunzi sent over some coffee-themed switches. These are their cocoa cream switches, which are much cheaper at about 40 cents a switch. They also look pretty, albeit they aren't sparkly like the other switches, and I needed to put them to the test. So I tried both switches out, and... The Unity one was just a lot louder than I was wanting. Like, I wanted kind of a quiet, clacky, thocky build. Yeah, I said clacky, thocky. Deal with it. So, it actually turned out that the Ice Latte switch is one after all. And that's how I decided all my switches for this build. Thank you. Now, I know, I know, we're in a video about how I made my own keycaps, and all I've been talking about is a keyboard and switches. But don't worry, I saved the best for now. Actually, now I'm going to talk about the keycaps. Now, in order to make your own set of keycaps, the first thing you need is a theme. And my theme was coffee, because I worked as a barista for a few years. Now, with the theme part done, you then need to pick out some color options. Think about colors that go well together. Think about colors that you want on your keyboard. Then you can get a Pantone book and pick out your colors. Then play around with your idea with a tool like Keyboard Render Kit. Run it by some friends, get some advice, see what people actually jive with. After that, it's time to maybe find a factory. You can either do this by reaching out to keyboard vendors or going on Alibaba and finding one for yourself. Every factory is a little bit different, and for some, you're going to have to do your own design work in Adobe Illustrator. However, for others, you kind of just give them the colors that you want and the keyboard kit that you want. So you kind of have to figure that part out on your own. Now, if you're doing it right, you'll also want to figure out what kind of keys you want to include, what kind of font you want to use, novelties, etc. Factories or design Discord servers might be able to help you with this, but I'm oversimplifying basically everything. Once you've done that, well, it's time to start prototyping. And I had to go through so many stages of prototypes with this set. For example, the first ones, the font was like way too magenta, and I didn't like that. Often, there's a language barrier, so you'll have prototypes where the keys are just the complete wrong color. Like, it wasn't a color matching issue, it was just the wrong color. You'll have to verify the colors with Pantone books in person, or maybe that somehow the colors just turned out right for you. Personally, it took many different prototypes to get the exact matches that I was looking for. Now, a lot of people that run group buys will wait until after the group buy is done to start their prototyping stage. Alfred, I don't care about plastic. And that would mean the group buy would get delayed for years. No more group buys. Oh my gosh, Alfred, listen. Like for example, I started this set in 2021. If I immediately sold it just as it was an idea, that you wouldn't have gotten it until now. That's three years of development time just because I was picky about colors. Now sure, the very first rendition would have still been a fine looking keycap set, 
but I wanted everything to be perfect. Like, look at these little guys. I absolutely adore how they look now. In the case of this set, I hired a novelty artist from my Discord server. His name is Legdad, he's incredibly talented, and we worked together to make these designs as cute as possible to fit the theme of the set. Some other things I glanced over with keycap design is how you get the money to do it, keycap profile, keycap material, those are all things that you just kind of have to figure out yourself. I'm not a wizard, I'm just a guy that's done it a couple times. But if you have an idea that you're really passionate about, then with the keyboard hobby, you can make it happen. So just to talk a little bit more about the set that I ended up making, this is Polycap's Coffee Shop. I made it with Kinetic Labs in the same factory I made Polycap's Hippo with. It's a die sub PBT set made out of pretty thick plastic, and it's got a lot of novelties and a very big base kit. We worked really hard to make this set support as many keyboard layouts as possible. Not all of them though. And having the novelties included in the base kit for only $79.99 makes it about half the price of some GMK sets. <laughs> Send it GMK, all your freaking hate, listen. But it's 2023, inexpensive as can be. What do you freaking man mean, man, listen? Now obviously GMK is a different keycap material. It's a different method. They have expensive molds. They have really high scrap rates and that's what makes it more expensive but I like Dice Up PBT because it sounds deeper and thockier. So to me, it's a better type of keycap. That's just my personal rant. All of this is preference, but hey, I guess a million of you have subscribed to me, so maybe you care about my preference. So after four different prototypes, a bunch of different back and forth development, I finally got the keycap set that I love. And that's why I have it here for you. I could probably spend another 20 to 30 minutes talking about all the intricacies of keycap development. So if you want something like that, then please leave a comment down below and maybe I'll do a Q&A style live stream. Like this is the way nerdiest side of the keyboard hobby. So I know probably most of you don't care about this and most of you will not have been subscribed for this. You're subscribed for budget keyboards or something. But to me, this is like the coolest thing ever to be able to make a product and have you guys be able to have it in your hands and say, hey, I made that. That's really cool. Funny enough, the coffee shop desk mat that you guys love so much it's sold out multiple times was originally supposed to launch with this keycap set back in the day. But it, uh, yeah, we, the keycap set got delayed quite a lot. Sorry about that. Also, the TG67 has RGB and I completely did not realize that until this moment. There you go. Now, if you guys are interested in this keycap set at all, I'll have it linked down below. It's $79.99, it's in stock. We made 500 sets of it and I think we're already almost sold out but we'll try and get it back soon, I promise. It won't be years this time. And if coffee isn't your thing, then you can also check out Polycap's Hippo from the same exact website. I'm personally so proud of this keycap set, and I'm glad I finally get to share it with you. So I'll be leaving you with the sound test. Here you go.